Hello, everyone. Everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Today, to bother all the Aries people, I came dressed with a lion. Um, <laughs> why, why, why? Welcome to all of you again to the second day of the mental, the mind week of Aries related to the third eye chakra. Today, the topic is the question, why? So let's go to this question, it comes from here. So now, why? The question why comes from why? That comes from the Indo-European language, qui. Remember that yesterday I said that why comes from quo the word quo. Well, today, why comes from qui? Why? <laughs> because the letter E in this in European language is the, um, the causal uh, enclitic, uh, sorry, yes, the causal enclitic is the one that determines the cause of something okay so is the one that is talking about the cause of this thing the reasons of why it happening it is happening something to this thing okay remember that quo means is the thing the object of the question okay so qui is the reason why this thing is living something, experiencing, experiencing something. Hmm? So all this is talking about the reason and the cause, the reason and the cause of something, which that would be the origin. So this is the reason of why the question why take us to the origin of all things, to the beginning of every reality that we know. All the things that are here today, that we know today, has an origin, has a reason of existence. And the question why is the one that takes us to find out all these origins? So the importance of questioning ourselves why is in order to understand the origin of the things that made us be what we are today. In the cultures that we have today, we have been designed in order to think towards the future. Because in our third dimension, we all know it's impossible to go back to the past. It's impossible to transform the past. And because of this, we used to say that we don't have to care about the past. We have to create future. 
we have to move forward. So we have to put all our will, our strength, our intentions into the future. And this is the reason why we are all the time thinking ahead, forward, and trying to escape from the past. So going towards the future, of course, that many of us, what we do is try to deny the past, to go away from the past in order to be able to transform ourselves into something better, because we kind of understand the past like an anchor, like something that doesn't help us to move forward. So for sure, by your own experience, you can tell that as faster you run to the future, escaping from the past, the faster you will leave exactly the same mistakes as before in the past. So we come back to understand here the line of time as we see our time or the circle of time. Past, present, and future. So again, to understand this, in our society point of view, we go from the past to the future and we are in the present moving ahead towards the future. So we cannot go back to the past. So we have to let it go to erase the weight of the past. So in the moment when we leave the third dimension towards the fourth dimension, we understand that the time is much more like a circle in the shape of a spiral than a line. So this means that we can never leave the past behind. It's literally impossible. The past here is the structure of repetition. So the past is basically this turn here, and then it's this turn here, and this turn here, and this turn here. So this means that the past repeats itself constantly, maybe in another level of vibration, another level of consciousness, but it repeats once and again. Perhaps the subjects are different. Perhaps the environment is different, but the structure is the same. Hmm? So the base, the structure of this is a circle, is always a circle. Maybe the circle is located in this shape or in this shape or in this shape, but it will be still the same. As an example, we can tell grand-grandfather, grandfather, father and son. For example, so just for you to understand it better, the system, the structure is to be in dad, grandfather, um, son, because my grandfather was also a son of someone. My grandfather was a father of someone. My grandfather is a great son of someone. Okay, so the system repeats, but the people, we have different names, living in different countries, okay? So the environment and the subjects are different, but the system is the same, it's continuous, it's constant, okay? So this structure is the one that tells me that it doesn't matter what do I do in my life, some way, or an, some way or another, I will come back to the beginning. And I keep moving 
into the next one and the next one and the next one. So what does this mean? That everything that I do has a system that works like an echo. Hmm? So this system works exactly the same even if we are in the subconscious, the unconscious, or the conscious. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change. This is like this. The only thing that changes really is my attitude according to this structure, how it works. So now, when we are living in one of these circles doing things and suddenly we start to leave th things that we don't understand the reason of why they are good or bad for me, the question that I start to do is why? Why? So the question why is the one that helps me to find the origin of this constant loop. So now imagine that I am here in this point of this process and I say, why I'm here? Why I'm living this? So the question immediately will take me to the first one, the one before myself to see it. So here is the cause. And then I ask why? And I go to the next one before. Why? And it goes to the next one and so on. The question why takes me to a new origin of this system. Remember that the one that is unconscious doesn't make questions. The only one that makes questions is the one that is conscious. The one that is conscious doesn't have the answers, have all the questions. Because remember, the one that is unconscious is living through the waves of the others, is the one that is moved by the positive and the negative, trying to sail in between the currents of the society, of the ideas, living through the concepts of the others. When we start the path of consciousness, for sure, you all have been through that. The first question you do is, why? So now this. Why do we think? No, sorry. Why, if the why is the key? to be aware, do we think that the one that is conscious has all the question, has all the answers and no need to ask why? You got the question that I did? I repeat again the question because even myself couldn't get it. Why, if the question why is the key for the awareness, are we thinking that the one that is awakened has all the answers and doesn't have any reason to ask why again. The, the key 
of being conscious is not to believe that we have the answers to all the origins. The key of consciousness is to keep asking why. The question why is the one that takes us to the origin, to the initiation, to the main energy, the inertia that moves us forward in order to exist and create. And this is why the universe only has one only possible answer for the question why. Do you know which one it is? The last question of the universe to the question why is why not? Simple. is another question. As we have said, the questions are the origin of the things. The question is the origin of the consciousness. The one that is following the consciousness knows exactly that in order to love the answers, must love the question even more. The wise one knows that the question is the key. There is no answer that is bigger than the question. So the key to understand for this week and even more today is that nobody has the right answer. Nobody has the only answer to anything. Because the only possible answer is the question. So you have to keep questioning everything. And we have two ways of asking. The questioning from the ego and the questioning from the self, from the being. When we question through the ego is when we are fighting to achieve the question, to achieve the answer. Is when we are judging the other one because we want to put our truth over the other's answer. When we question through the ego, the only thing that we can create in the other one is a reaction for an answer to defend its own vision instead of making the other doubt and ask a new question. When you do the question, when you do the question uh, to the other one, like why this or why that, what you are doing there is to push in the other one to look for an answer to defend itself. This is what we usually do all the time. We question the other in a way that the other needs to defend its answer. And now the question from the being is when you question to the uh, when you question the other in a way that you're trying to show the other person a different way, inviting inviting the other person to make another question, to doubt, to question itself, and to look for a better answer. As an example, from the ego, the question 
Why do you do it this way? And now from the being. Why do you think you do it in this way? You see the difference? It's the same question. The first one goes against the ego. The second one invites the ego to look for a better answer. Perhaps it seems like silly at the beginning, but to learn how to question why opens many different possibilities instead of wasting energy on the fight. And now, take your notebook and I invite you to do the task, which is to write down all the why of your life. Why, 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 why? Why this, why that, why this? There's no need to answer, just do the questions. The vibration for today is God. The statement for today is I am contemplation's vision. <laughs>